It is game day for the Cleveland State Vikings in the Horizon League Championship tonight. Cleveland State will look to advance to the NCAA tournament for the third time in program history when they take on Oakland in the Horizon League title game. I'm Dave Tinatelli. Welcome to a special presentation at WKYC.com. Whenever you talk about the Cleveland State Vikings basketball program, the first name that almost always comes on is Ken Mouse McFadden, one of the stars of that 1986 team that made it all the way to the Sweet 16. And Mouse, it is a pleasure to have you with us here. And just tell me first how you are feeling as a proud alum watching uh, what the Vikings have done, not just this tournament run, but this season. Um, well, first, Dave, thanks for having me. And, and it's funny because all the alumni, you know, we, we're on a, a, a group text. And so we are going back and forth all night talking about this play and that play. And we're following Pat Vianchek as the commentator. And I'm always texting coach and telling them how great of a job he's doing. So, I mean, it's very exciting for us. I mean, we're extremely happy. And, I, and you know, I always say long time coming. Uh, but what Coach Gates has done in his two years tenure, I took outstanding. And the guys is just working so hard. And they're playing so well. And it's funny because we talked about we talked about them playing against OU. I'm like, how in the world? I mean, you can't go to the free throw line. I can't. Somebody can't make a layup. You know. So it's funny how they transition from that point and just rolled away with a bunch of games and something just clicked that fast that early in the season. And lo and behold, they're knocking on the door uh, for the Horizon League Championship to get back into the dance. So it's just a great time. It's, it's, it's fun. Can you put it from a player's perspective? You talked about Coach Gates. He, he came into the program. They had to hire him very late, like in the late summer of 2019. So there's not a whole lot of opportunity for players who are already on the team to get to know him. And then, you know, you one season, they win 11 games, and then, you know, COVID breaks in. And now in year two, I mean, you're one win away from a championship. Um, just the, the way he's meshed with the players, nothing short of phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, and, and, again, and, and he probably be like, and, and I tell him that all the time. I mean, it's such a short period of time. And we have went through a number of coaches, um, even with Roly Massimino, who won an NCAA championship. And, and, and what he has been able to accomplish is just amazing. And, and then, and like you said, he came in so late, one of the last hired coaches of the year for him to put together uh, his squad and the way he went about uh, getting the guys to stay, and even though we know some of the guys have left, getting the guys to play together, getting the guys to understand his style of play, and the guys being able to implement his system. Phenomenal. Short period of time, it's just, it's great. The only thing we wish, and you know, we tease about this on our group text, we wish we had fans in the stands. That is the only missing portion of this whole entire run. But at the same time, I tell Coach, hey, the best is yet to come. But, man, would it be fantastic if we had our fans this year? It, it, I mean, what a run. I mean, it's, been, it's just been great. Well, and it's funny you bring that up, Mouse. People, people talk about Cleveland as not a great – college basketball town and and they'll say well you know it's if the when the mac tournament you know is is, is at rocket mortgage field house and if kent and akron are playing together okay fine you know you'll you'll get a bit of a buzz but it's it's not a great college basketball town i'm young enough but i remember what it was like in 1986 i certainly remember what it was like in 2009 uh, this town and this fan base will get behind a team that it can appreciate in terms of the Vikings and the way um, each of those teams I mentioned play. Your run and stun team in 86, 
Coach Waters' high-octane team in 2009. Um, they'll get the, the fans in this town will get behind the Vikings um, when it's, it's a great brand of basketball. That, that is absolutely right. Um, first of all, as you know, everybody like winners. I mean, that, 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 that's going to draw attention by itself. And then to, to understand the game and to understand what Coach Gates has done so far, you have to appreciate it. I mean, you have to back him up. You have to like the kids because, I mean, they're giving you their all. And, and, and they're being rewarded for it because they're knocking on the door. Uh, they have an opportunity to play March Madness basketball. For me, I always said, if you are not playing postseason basketball, you are not playing college basketball. I always enjoyed that one and done. There's nothing like, hey, put it all on the line. Anybody can be beaten. One and done. If you lose, you go home. Well, guess what? It brings out the best in you. And everybody thinks that the madness starts in the tournament. And my belief, no, the madness starts at the end of regular season. When conference play kicks in, the madness has officially started. And so that's why you're seeing all these buzzer beaters, buzzer beaters. You're seeing just outstanding basketball. Um, because you have played preseason, you have played regular season. Guys know their role, what they can and cannot do, and it's about putting it all together for the game in front of you. The game plan that the coaches prepare the guys for, if you are able to uh, – maintain and sustain that level and play hard, you'll be just fine. Ken McFadden joining us, one of the stars of the 1986 uh, Sweet 16 Cleveland State Vikings teams and get ready for tonight's Horizon League Championship game. What do you remember the most about 86 and that run from um, being the, the Cinderella to where you guys were getting national attention and coming within an eyelash of beating David Robinson and Navy to get to the elite eight? Uh, well, what I remember most is I, I, I give the guys a lot of credit for the season before, because I think the guys finished 21 and eight or 21 and seven, but we didn't get no respect out of the AMQ eight. And so the mindset to coming into the next season, 86, uh, my freshman year, I, I think I was just an added piece of a puzzle that just need a little bit more uh, punch. And so uh, that run, I mean, first of all, the finish of season 29 and four is just out outstanding. And so uh, the fans, the team, the coaching, um, we, we really put it all together that 86 year. And what's funny is that we, we played a couple of games. Uh, we went to Michigan and, you know, you couldn't tell us anything. We were cocky. Okay. We, we, we knew we were good. Okay. And we, and we wanted to show the world and we went to Michigan and we're tied up at half. And we're running through the tunnel and we're talking all kind of smack. And they came out and just blasted us. What a wake up call. And so Kevin says, <laughs> he just laughs with his little chuckle. Let the lion sleep. And so I, I love that phrase even till today. And so now the next high quality opponent was DePaul. And so learning from Michigan, uh, we're not going to wake them up, okay? We're going to come into your house, we're going to do our thing, and we're just going to leave gracefully. And so we must have beat DePaul by 15, 16 uh, very easily. 
And so we had a couple of games that year that really prepped us. But even before the season, it, it, basketball at Cleveland State University was so high quality. We would take turns playing with the Cavaliers. Cavalier mm-hmm. players would join us on the weekdays. We would go to the Coliseum on the weekends. So if we're hanging with the pros because, you know, you, you pick up first five, the pros would pick their guys and they would be on the sideline calling next. And, and they would be pissed off. They like, hey, these college guys can play. Do not. And I remember Alvin Robinson and Ron Harper, they would be like, hey, if you're coming down here thinking this is a cakewalk, you're going to be sitting on the sideline asking for next. And so we were so competitive and we were so good. And so it's almost like a step down. You're playing against the pros, which is a whole different level. When you play against college guys, for me, I'm like, I'm ready. This is a joke. (laughs) I'm like, nobody's stopping me. And so first of all, my mindset is I'm just on a whole different level. And then I got Kevin. He's like, patience. No rush. You're okay. You're only a rookie. And I had no problem with that because I'm looking at Clinton Smith. I'm like, this dude is a phenomenal pro. I mean, he was such a tremendous athlete. And then Clinton Ramsey. I mean, nobody's stopping Clinton Ramsey. And then I got these two little guards and Sean and Eddie. You can't dribble around them because they're going to pick your pocket every time you try to do something. And Eric Mudd was a very solid post player who we can throw the ball into. And me and Paul Stewart is the two rookies coming off the bench, helping out this team. So the, the, the team was well built. And, and as they say, timing is everything. Okay. Um, Mackie had finally hit that, that strive, that nucleus, that, that recruitment of players that he knew can perform within his system. And it worked. Uh, Lo and behold, we're in the tournament. First game, I'll never forget, we're we're sitting in the Viking Lounge. And and the year before, it was so heartbreaking to see the guys not get that call for the NCAA tournament. So now, a year later, we're back in the Viking Lounge, and we're saying they got to give us some respect. Just let us in. We will shock the world. Just let us in. Lo and behold, they called Cleveland State versus Indiana. The first thing we said is they lost. See, we had no doubt in our mind, oh, we're going to beat Indiana. It it didn't matter who you put us up against that year. Whoever was on, whoever was our opponent was going to lose that game. That's how much confidence we had going into the NCAA tournament. Bobby Knight knew it. You just can't get your guys to understand it because, I mean, they're Indiana University. I mean, they got Steve Alfred. They got the legendary coach Bobby Knight. Right. But one thing they don't have is a bunch of hungry players, can't, thirsty to play against you. So for us, that's an easy victory. So you can't beat Indiana in the tournament because there was a lot of one-and-done teams and then play St. Joe's, and nothing against St. Joe's, but there's no way they can beat us. You can't beat Indiana and then roll over the next game. So that's two games in the bag automatically. And then, so then you get the week break, and then you come back, and we have Navy. Uh, Outstanding game. Uh, One of the top 50 greatest players of all time in David Robertson. And they beat us by one. A couple of questionable calls down the end that people are still mad at today. Um, I, I have not watch. watched the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I have not watched the tape. <laughs> and I've watched it quite a few games, but I haven't watched that tape. But I would always tease David whenever he came into town and played against the Cavaliers. I'm like, you know you lucked up. <laughs> and so... And, and so we would always just chuckle all the time. So it was great. It, what a run. Um, great year. Uh, we can't wait for somebody else to do it again. 
again, uh, mid-major colleges. Um, it's funny because you think about the power schools. And right now I'm looking at the picture where everything is so neutral because of COVID. It's perfect. Upset city. Put us on a court. Give us a fair game. And we can be, we can be victorious. We can beat you on any given night. Um, and I always give Butler a world of credit for coming out of a mid-major school and not going to the NCAA championship once, but twice. So people can say, oh, one time, that's a fluke. Back to back, no, that's not a fluke. That's a well-oiled program, and they're coming out of mid-major. And so that that that's the good thing about the NCAA tournament and March Madness and uh, just having fun with it. You mentioned um, that you're, you know, with group text, you keep in touch with your teammates. Uh, Coach Mackey as well, you keep in touch with uh, with him as well as uh, uh, we, we kind of all reach out to each other during this time of COVID. We do. And, and, and he joins in on the text. Uh, I think he just spoke with the team about two or three games ago, a pre, a pre, uh, uh, pre game, uh, speak, uh, coach Gates allowed him to speak to the team. So that was pretty neat, but we're all still very, very close. Um, and we still tease around and we talk all the time and we get together whenever we can. And coach Mackey is involved and we still text and email him all the time. And, hang out on the phone. So uh, that, 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 that's a great bunch. That's a great, great bunch. Um, Mouse, you know, people always want to know, you know, what's Ken McFadden up to these days? Uh, I know you're working for Cuyahoga County. Uh, just let everybody know kind of how you're doing. Uh, very, very well. Um, life is good. Life is good. Um, the family is good. You know, for me, it's all about your health because your health is your wealth. Um, and, 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 uh, I'm still here in, uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, the city has been good to me and I hope I've been good for the city. Uh, and so no complaints, no complaints at all. Last thing. And you've been so gracious for your time. We appreciate Ken McFadden's time here this afternoon. Um, I, if, if coach Gates says, okay, mouse McFadden, you get, you know, a minute with the guys, you know, to give them advice before tonight's game against Oakland. What, what's your advice to the, the Vikings here as they play another one of these one and done games that we talked about earlier? I would just probably tell the guys, keep doing what you have been doing. Okay. Follow the game plan for tonight. Play hard, leave it all out on the court and you will never have any regrets. Okay, let the chips fall where they lie. But as long as you know you gave it your all, you played your hardest, fine. You'll be okay. And at the pace that they're playing at, 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 at the confidence that they're playing at, um, there should be no reason why they cannot come out victorious tonight. So I would just tell the guys, hey, listen, have fun, okay, because – you won't get the game back. You won't get the time back. Uh, let it fly. Be loose, okay? Be yourself and have fun. Great advice. Great advice. Free and easy. Mouse, we appreciate your time. Enjoy the game tonight. Watch it in group texting with the guys. And uh, I <laughs> sure you. Will. Yes, we can't tell you how much we appreciate your time. You are uh, one of Cleveland's own, my friend, and uh, it, it's great to get your perspective on game night. Hey, thanks, Dave. Appreciate you. Go All Vikes. Right. Go Vikes.